wife and son were encamped at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Well, it turns out it wasn't just the public, though, that was kept in the dark. Senior Biden aides also had no idea Hunter was there. The younger Biden's stay was a social whirlwind. He attended the glitzy state dinner for the Indian prime minister, also attended, by the way, by the AG Merrick Garland, along with the White House's July 4th extravaganza. Remember the balcony shots. And the angle also finds it mega odd that when the Secret Service revealed that cocaine was discovered in the West Wing, the White House failed to mention that Hunter had, in fact, been living there at the time. Joining me now, Charlie Hurt, Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor. All right, Charlie, the Post is also saying that on the day that Hunter was set to enter the plea deal, White House aides intentionally left space in the president's schedule so he could monitor the case. Hmm, Charlie, I thought it was all hands off, that we don't, we don't get involved in what your son is going through. I can't keep up with the lines they're using. Exactly. And I have to say that last thing to me is the most shocking part of that entire story. Um, we've sort of come to sort of expect the White House uh, to do uh, things, uh, you know, to sort of uh, play hide, hide and seek with information. Uh, and the fact that they didn't reveal the fact that, that Hunter Biden, even to top officials, was living at the White House for two weeks, it it's almost doesn't even surprise me anymore. But the fact that they cleared the president's decks, cleared his schedule, for the day that he was supposed to appear in court. It's like, so we don't know who's running the country. We don't know who's making decisions. We don't know who is sending out tweets that are suppo supposedly being sent by the president. Uh, we don't know, uh, you know what, what uh, his schedule is, you know, what, what he's doing on a day-to-day -day uh, basis, and how much of his time is invested in worrying about the legal woes of his son. And, and it's, it, it's kind of, you know, we've uh, almost sort of gotten used to it, but it's, it should still be shocking to us that we don't know what the president is doing on a regular basis and to what degree he is completely preoccupied with this disaster that is his, the, that is the first son. Now, the Washington Post um, actually reported yesterday that at this point, um, the probe into Hunter Biden appears unlikely to result in separate criminal charges, but FBI officials are aggressively pursuing the investigation, Charlie. I, I, how are they? There's no movement on this case. There's been no evidence of any movement on this case, but they keep saying, oh, there's, there's, we're really aggressively on this. What is that? Yeah. So, the, of course, this is the whole purpose of setting up a special prosecutor. Not that I think that we should have a special prosecutor in this case, but the idea that you're going to trust the Department of Justice and the FBI, which this administration has so thoroughly weaponized to use against their political opponents, the idea that they're going to accurately and fully investigate what is clearly crimes, crimes that would get any normal American arrested and put in jail, uh, the idea that they're gonna, we can trust them to do this in this administration, no way possible. Uh, what about the Hunter Biden attorneys uh, bowing out? Three, three from Latham and Watkins said bye bye. They might be witnesses, apparently. So, you know, if anybody is wondering what a disaster that plea deal falling apart was, this is this explains it all. Because the whole reason that the attorneys claim that they can't stay with the case is because they might be called as witnesses in in the collapse of the of the crooked plea deal. So that tells you about all you need.